Task 8 talks about operating as a representative in terms of the Phase Act. Task 8 has 12 qualifying criteria. Let's look at Task 8, Qualifying Criteria 4. Distinguish between advice and intermediary services in terms of the Phase Act. We are going to cover the following sections. Section 1 of the Phase Act, which covers the definition of a representative and intermediary services. And the guidance note on intermediary services and representatives. And Section 13 of the Phase Act, which covers the qualifications of representatives and duties or responsibilities of an authorized financial service providers. And Section 4, Subsection 2 of Board Notice 104 of 2008, covering the split of supervised versus non-supervised representatives on the representative register. First, we look at Section 1 of the Phase Act. Here we have an illustration of an FSP that is split out into its components, being the representatives, key individuals, administration, and the compliance officer, who ultimately all play a role in the FSP, providing financial services to a client. We are going to focus on the representative and who is defined as a representative per Section 1 of the Phase Act. The definition per Section 1 of the Phase Act states, Representative means any person including a person employed or mandated by such first-mentioned person who renders a financial service to a client for or on behalf of a financial services provider in terms of conditions of employment or any other mandate but excludes a person rendering clerical, technical, administrative, legal, accounting or other service in a subsidiary or subordinate capacity, which service A. Does not require judgment on the part of the latter person or B. Does not lead a client to any specific transaction in respect of a financial product in response to general inquiries. Let's break this down and make it a bit easier to understand. A representative is any person who is appointed, employed or mandated by the FSP, but also includes a person who is employed or mandated by the person that is employed or mandated by the FSP. A representative renders a financial service on behalf of the FSP based on terms of employment contract and or mandate. A person is not a representative if they provide only clerical, technical, administrative, legal, accounting or other services that does not require judgment or does not lead to financial products in response to a general inquiry. It is important to note that a representative can do and or perform certain administration tasks and still be a representative. What needs to be considered if a person only does and or performs administration related activities is that they are not a representative. But as soon as the person provide and or gives any advice to a client, then they are considered to be a representative, even if the advice arose while they were doing administrative tasks for the client or the FSP. Next, we are going to look up at the components that make up a financial service. Firstly, we have furnishing and or giving of advice. Secondly, we have rendering an intermediary service. We will cover the definition of intermediary service shortly. Lastly, we have a combination of the two, being the furnishing or giving of advice and the rendering of intermediary services. The definition of advice per the Phase Act states, Advice means subject to subsection 3, paragraph A. Any recommendation, guidance or proposal of a financial nature furnished by any means or medium to a client or group of clients. A. In respect of the purchase of any financial product. 
or B, in respect of the investment in any financial product, or C, on the conclusion of any other transaction, including a loan or session, aimed at the incurring of any liability or the acquisition of any right or benefit in respect of any financial product, or D, on the variation of any term or condition applying to a financial product, on the replacement of any such product or on the termination of any purchase of or investment in any such product and irrespective of whether or not such advice. 1. Is furnished in the course of or incidental to financial planning in connection with the affairs of the client. Or 2. Results in any such purchase, investment, transaction, variation, replacement or termination as the case may be, being effected. Furnishing or giving of advice means any recommendation, guidance or proposal of a financial nature to a client, purchase of any financial product, investment in any financial product, conclusion of any other transaction in respect of any financial product, this includes incurring any loans or acquisition of any rights or benefits, any variations, replacements or terminations of any financial products. It is important to note that it doesn't matter if the advice was during or incidental to the financial planning of the client's affairs. The definition of an intermediary service per the FASE Act states, Intermediary service means subject to subsection 3, paragraph B, any act other than the furnishing of advice performed by a person. A. The result of which is that a client may enter into, offers to enter into, or enters into any transaction in respect of a financial product. Or B. With a view to 1. Buying selling or otherwise dealing in, whether on a discretionary or non-discretionary basis, managing, administering, keeping in safe custody, maintaining or servicing a financial product. 2. Collecting or accounting for premiums or other monies payable by the client in respect of a financial product. Or 3. Receiving, submitting, processing, or settling the claims of a client in respect of a financial product. Therefore, intermediary service is basically a third-party relationship between the client and the product supplier, or also known as the product provider. The most important concept to understand is that an intermediary service is any other act other than providing or giving advice. As mentioned, an intermediary service is performed by a person on behalf of the client or product supplier. The intermediary service includes 1. Entering into financial products with the product supplier 2. Buying, selling, dealing in, managing, administering, safe custody maintaining or servicing a financial product the client purchased from product suppliers. 3. Collecting or accounting for premiums or other money payable by the client to the product supplier. 4. Receiving, submitting or processing the claims of the client against the product suppliers. Section 1, subsection 3, paragraph B states that when a bank merely acts as a conduit for collecting and paying, they are excluded as being offering an intermediary service. This is basically because the banks are being used as a means of transaction and not rendering a financial service in relation to the financial product. We often refer to a person in the definition or in the act. The act defines a person as being any natural person, partnership or trust and includes a. 
any organ of state as defined in Section 239 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, 1996, Act No. 108 of 1996. B. Any company incorporated or registered as such under any law. C. Any body of persons, corporate or unincorporate. So it is important to note that when the act refers to a person, they mean it could be a natural person, a partnership, a trust, an organ of state, a company or a body of persons. A person is just basically a placeholder to describe a person or persons or a type of entity and not just a natural person like you or me. Next, we will look at guidance note on intermediary services and representatives. The guidance note covers what makes up a financial service with specific focus on intermediary services and when those carrying out intermediary services are considered representatives. A financial service includes the furnishing or giving of advice or the rendering of intermediary services or the furnishing or giving of advice and the rendering of an intermediary service. Here we illustrate the relationship of the person providing the intermediary service between the client and the FSP or product supplier. The guidance note indicates that the furnishing and giving of advice will always be conducted and performed by a representative. Advice will always require judgment by the person giving it. Therefore, this person will be a representative of the FSP. The guidance note then looks at intermediary services and when this is considered to be conducted and performed by a representative or not. If a person provides clerical, technical, administrative duties and also provide advice, then yes, the person will be considered a representative. A person who is rendering the intermediary service provides clerical, technical, administrative, legal, accounting or other service in a subsidiary or subordinate capacity only and does not provide or give any advice, then the person would not be considered a representative. It is important to understand when a person is to render or provide the financial service as a representative or not, because a representative has to comply with fit and proper requirements. The guidance note provides specific guidance with regards to furniture and motor car dealers that render and or provide financial products to its customers. When furniture and or a motor car dealer renders or provides services on a financial product to its customers, there are two possible scenarios. Scenario 1. The furniture and motor car dealers issues forms to the clients to take up an insurance policy for the goods being bought. No interaction with the client that requires judgment takes place. If the customer is interested in the financial product, then they need to complete the form and send it to the FSP or hand it back to the dealer. If this interaction leads to a financial transaction with the customer, then the person handling the forms is not seen as a representative.
In scenario two, if the salesperson actively encourages a customer to accept or even requires the customer to enter into an insurance agreement, which is a credit insurance policy and or agreements providing long-term or short-term cover for theft or damage, etc. In addition to the main higher purchase and or credit agreement, buying the car, etc. This scenario is a bit trickier and guidance has been provided in the guidance note. Let's take a look at scenario 2 in detail. Because relatively complicated matters regarding insurance policy cover must be explained and disclosed to the customer. The person needs to explain exclusions of the policy, the choice of policy between that of the dealer and other insurance providers as well as features of the policy. These go beyond pure administrative functions as outlined in Scenario 1. That person cannot be excluded from the definition of a representative and must meet the fit and proper requirements. The way for dealers to avoid appointing each salesperson as a representative is to ensure that the salesperson does not interact with the customer in terms of the insurance or financial service transaction. The dealer should therefore consider appointing a dedicated person who will render financial services as a representative to interact with the customer on insurance-related transactions. This is to avoid the dealer having its salesperson being deemed to be representatives. Finally, we look at Section 13 of the FASE Act and Section 4, Subsection 2, BN 104 of 2008. Now we look at the FSP and its duties with regards to representatives and their respective key individuals. Here we show the parties between the FSP and the client and the responsibility the FSP has. We now take a look at the duties of the FSP with regards to maintaining a register of its representatives. The FSP must maintain a register of representatives and key individuals of these representatives. This register is to include the name of the representative and key individual of the representative business address of the representative and key individual of the representative. If the representative acts as an employee or mandatory of the FSP. Specify the categories the representative is competent to render financial service on. An FSP is to regularly update this register and make it available for inspection to the registrar. Remember, a reference to Registrar, Commissioner, Authority and FSCA all refer to the same body. Board Notice 104 of 2008, Section 4, Subsection 2 states that it must be indicated on the representative register whether the representative is acting under supervision and differentiate on the representative register between representatives that are acting under supervision and those that meet all the requirements and are not acting under supervision. The FSP is to update the register within five days of being informed and or notified of a disbarment of a representative or key individual. The FSP must update this register by removing the name of that representative 
The registrar is to maintain and publish a central register of the debarred representative and key individuals of the representatives. The registrar and the FSP will be using or comparing each other's registers to ensure that the information is aligned. We have looked at all the sections relating to distinguishing and differentiating between advice and intermediary services in terms of the FASE Act. Let's go through some questions to test what you have learned. Question 1. Which of the following would be considered to be elements of advice? 1. Answering routine admin queries. 2. Making a recommendation in respect of the purchase of a financial product. 3. Providing a proposal of a financial nature. 4. Distributing promotional material. 5. Giving objective information about a financial product. 6. Advice by a board member of any pension fund organization or friendly society to their members on benefits to be enjoyed by the members. Option A, B, C or D. Pause the video here and read through the question and see if you can come to the correct answer. The correct answer is option C. Statement 2 being making a recommendation in respect of the purchase of a financial product and statement 3 providing a proposal of a financial nature. The other statements are not considered advice. Statement 1 is administrative in nature. Statement 4 is administrative in nature as it is just a distribution of promotional material. Statement 5 is providing general information and therefore not advising the client on anything. Statement 6 is providing general information and therefore not advising the client on anything. Question 2. The concept of financial service consists of the following alternatives. 1. Giving advice. 2. Giving advice and providing an intermediary service. 3. Providing an intermediary service. 4. Providing managerial services. Option A, B, C or D. The correct answer is option B. Hopefully this was easy enough to identify based on the slides already covered. Question 3. Which statement is incorrect and does not describe the intermediary service within the FASE Act? A. Intermediary service only relates to factual information given by a representative to client in regard to a financial product. B. Intermediary service means that it has to relate to a financial product. C. Intermediary service means any activity other than the furnishing of advice that is performed by a person for or on behalf of a client or product supplier. D. None of these. It is important to note that the question is asking which option is incorrect. Take a moment to see if you can identify the incorrect statement. Did you get option A as the incorrect statement? Hopefully you saw that intermediary services relate to financial products and it's any activity other than that of furnishing a client with advice. So option A is incorrect and therefore would be the option you would need to select. So let's go through a final overview of what has been covered. We covered the definition of a representative as well as the definition of a person as it relates to a representative. An important point to note is that any representatives that are not natural persons are called juristic representatives. We then covered what furnishing or giving advice and rendering of intermediary services mean. 
Next, we looked at the guidance note on intermediary services and representatives as well as specific guidance dealing with furniture and motor dealers when providing intermediary services and the effect on their salesperson in deciding if they are considered representatives or not. And finally, we looked at the FSP's requirements to maintain and update a register of representatives. We hope you enjoyed the video and learnt a lot. Please make sure to check out our other RE videos.